Alléluia. Beko rababa sande bohara. Alléluia, alléluia. Oh. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I go to thee. I need thee every hour. Most precious God. Most tender. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus, we give you the praise. There is a dimension that God is releasing even in this season. Hallelujah. A real dimension of the Spirit. Many of you need to really position yourself in prayer because what the Lord wants to do in our lives is very, 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 very unique. Hallelujah. Go ahead and just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Say, my Father, <laughs> don't forget me, don't forget me, don't forget me, O Jehovah. Don't not forget me. Today is what the sixth day. Are you serious? The sixth time is flying. Time is flying. Time is flying. In Jesus' name, time is flying. Alabando rababo se brandeli bebios zela mandele bebios ada rababa rababa kashis. Hmm. Ah, we're gonna go to First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. I don't even have my uh, Lord help us. Anyways, it is well. Amen. Zaka tatahba. Ladaba telebo zumbra de di bios. Shege de bede beka ba. Levanto rodoro de bios saka da bahaya. In the name of Jesus, wonderful God, wonderful Savior. First Peter chapter four. I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. Let me play something, the background music or something. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Hmm. Somebody's... Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, what is this? Uh, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing power. From every form of headache and oppression, I break that power over you. And I command your head to be loosed and untied from the grip of affliction by the power in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Be strengthened, my sister. Be strengthened. Be empowered today. Let a special grace be upon you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, Rababa Kassando Rebebe Aprodos. Hallelujah. Um, um. Mm. Please take your uh, take your communion out. Um, just take your communion out. We're gonna take a just small communion quickly, and uh, please, I beg of you, Amen. Even as you do this this season, something unique, something powerful must happen in your destiny. Hallelujah, Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Libroko so bradaria tasa. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. We will not interrupt our 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 service today. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. P Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four. put your hand in that first Peter chapter 4 we're gonna go back there we're gonna go back there a little bit um, just just put that put that on hold and then we go to um, first Timothy chapter 2 first Timothy chapter 2 I want to really say something here hallelujah first Timothy chapter 2 it says verse 1 I exhort therefore that the first of all supplications prayers 
intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men. Number one, for kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God and Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, giving of thanks, be made, be made for all men. Now, he didn't say for yourself. For those, this scripture is for those who are mature to understand that it's not all about you. That in order for you to gain attention in heaven, you must start in the gap for men. That men in your prayers. Amen. And many devils, many people act like devils because they, they fail to understand. They fail to be ruled by the spiritual constitution that rules the eternity. And that is the positive anointing, which is the grace of God. Many people are walking left and right because Christians choose to fold their hands. Anybody that begin to come together, begin to pray for their leaders, pray for your job, pray for your boss, pray for people, you will see that sometimes their will will be will be directed by the plans of god many of us don't intercede so when they start acting wayward you start complaining you start acting wayward no 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 you can repent for a person you can repent for your leader you can repent for your family you can repent for your father you can repent for your mother you can pray for them and use your prayers to influence their patterns to influence the way they talk the way they speak hallelujah amen particularly says for kings that's the first one say for kings and those in authority why did Paul ha, ha, now Paul was communicating this to Timothy? Paul was sharing something to Timothy now because Paul was a man who spent most of his life in the prison, spent most of his life between jails. They were taken him from one place and the other in chains, and he had the ability to preach to the leaders. Why? Because he was praying for them that Christ be formed in their heart. Hallelujah! That Christ be formed what in their heart. We, we, we live in a generation where we uh, there are so much so much errors that has been taught in the body of christ um you, if you study the bible it says give it shall be given to you good measure press down shaking together running over and shall make given to you then he says also too he says ask it shall be ask it shall be given knock it shall be open seek and you shall find ask it shall be given to you so there are different realms the realm of people who are still in the realm of asking ask 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 they keep asking lord i need this father i need this mother i need this everything i need this and they just keep asking lord i need this lord i need this and, 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 and god will keep giving but if you keep making him as your santa claus if you keep making him as a a man that likes to like this like this like this like this like this uh, you must understand this amen you must understand that god is not a santa claus hallelujah amen somebody says god is not a santa claus hallelujah but if we must mature and begin to walk in the work that god has prepared for us we must mature from the area of knocking now knocking you say when you're knocking the bible says um, um, right from the days of john the baptist the kingdom of god the kingdom of god suffered violent and violent men takes it by force amen it takes the ability of aggression amen aggressiveness when you begin to knock and pound the gates of heaven amen that god opens a new season for you through the aggressiveness of prayer through persistent prayer and groanings of prayer amen god will usher you to another dimension but that is not where i'm going to i'm going to the last realm which is the seekers realm in this seekers realm these are for only people who are mature these are people who have grown up and they have stopped drinking milk they are now chewing meat Amen. These are realms of the spirit that when you begin to walk in this realm, hallelujah. Hey, you can literally seek God in your family. And by you seeking God in your family, everybody begins to benefit because now you've opened the heavens. It takes only one person to bring the invitation of Jesus to everyone. It takes only one person 
to sell your whole family to the devil. But when you make up your mind to seek the Lord with all of your heart, all of your mind, and all of your soul, in that day when the heavens open over you, in that day when God remembers you and God comes down in his glory, something is altered in your life. That is the day from when you begin to exist and begin to live. I prophesy upon you, something is about to happen in your destiny today. I came here because something is about to happen. Hallelujah. Now, hallelujah. Let's go, let's let's go to that first Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4. Mm. Okay. In verse 9. I mean verse uh, 8. Okay, we're going to meditate from verse 7, okay? All the way now. Amen. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 4 verse 7. He says but the end of all things is at hand. Be you, therefore, sober and watch to pray. Let me let me tell you something. There's one small antidote that we need in our Christian life. And it's what I call tolerance. You know, many believers are not tolerant nowadays. They are not. Can I say this to you? Many believers have lost the ability to be tolerant. Every people you just jump, 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 jump. Everybody want to rush, 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 rush. When I study people, if a man or a woman has a to high tolerance level, they will not be impatient. They will not be very angry. They will, they will, they will, they, they will not walk out of marriage very quickly. But people are so intolerant nowadays. You say one thing, they don't even care to hear God. They just jump out of prayer line like. Hallelujah. It's like you want they want to be babysitted. They want to hear the right things. They are much more, more spiritual than before. I mean, more spiritual than even a pastor. If you are more spiritual than the pastor, God is not asking you to walk in that area of pride. He wants you to, if you are more spiritual than the pastor, use your anointing to pray for the pastor. Use your grace or your relationship with God to maneuver things in the realm of the spirit to favor the man of God to another dimension. Hallelujah. One of the greatest men of God in um, um, Adeboe, in Nigeria, I studied him so much and I understand that this man literally carries many men of God and prays for them. He has passed that stage of trying to compete. He prays for them through his prayers, asking God that God will give them special grace. Asking the Lord, raise, he will say, Lord, raise men of God in this city. Raise true men of God in this city. That is genuine prayer. When you pray that kind of prayer, God is seeing that your heart is free from all this competition that is happening in the body of Christ. You must, your prayers, when you begin to pray, your prayer must have nothing with selfishness. Nothing with competition. We will all get there. Like they say, a man that, a man that talks at 20 is different from the man at the age of 50. A man that shows his anger at 20 is different from the man that shows his anger at 50. They're just different. The same Jesus that's 30 years old, 33 years old, destroying the church will not be the same Jesus acting the same way if he was 50 years old on the earth. Somebody there agree with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you grow, you mature. That's just it. As you grow, you mature. The heavens are falling now. I tell you, Kaya Kadobos. The heavens have been released right now, even as we speak. You hearing the sound of my voice. I see you are you listen God to me. God is walking within your heart. There is like a syringe put inside of you, and God is putting his blood inside of you. The particular lady, you ate poison. You ate something today. It's supposed to manifest in the next three months. You ate something in the weekend, during the weekend. There was celebration. You consumed something. The result of the prayer you prayed today. 
If you're not, if you if you're just joining us now, you didn't hear the prayers, go and watch it again. God is dissolving it, dissolving it, dissolving it, dissolving it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for that sister right now. You're hearing the sound of my voice. You are you say it's hard for you to get a job. Just raise your two hands up. I release the wind of the Spirit of God upon your hands. That sister, you have not had a job for like three years. Sustainable job. Sustainable job. Lord, as I come in agreement with your daughter, I bring that curse to an end. Let that financial drought in a, in a life come to an end now. 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 Look at your hands. In the name of Jesus. The judgment that says that you will be barren financially. I break that curse now. I break that curse now. I break that curse now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Receive the fire. Receive the power. Receive the grace of God. Right now, let it be upon you. Let it be upon you. In the name of Jesus. I speak the supernatural blessings of God. The supernatural favor of God. Let it be upon your life. You will call me and you will testify. This week, they will call you. This week, they will call you. They will call you. They will call you. They will call you. I call you by your name. And let favor call you by your name. Let the job be given to you by favor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter, First Peter chapter 4. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 8. Above all things, have fervent charity. Somebody say charity. Have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover a multitude of sins. Wow. You see that scripture? It says what? Above all things, have fervent charity. Do you have fervent charity? Some of us have fervent prayer life. Fervent charity. Fervent charity. Fervent charity has the ability to release what it release upon you. Amen. When this fervent love comes upon you, uh, just, just lift your hands up and just say, Lord, crown upon me fervency of your love. Fervency of your love. The fervency to walk in love. Release it upon me now in the name of Jesus. Give me the grace to walk in fervency of your love. When, if, when your love is so enriching, when God baptizes you with the love so much, Amen. The Bible says it covers a multitude of sins. Meaning, meaning, meaning. Without this fervency of love, there are multitude of sins that will break out in your life. Meaning, you can offend other people, or you can also receive offense based on how other people treat you. But when this fervency of love is so much, you can't resist it but to love. You can't hold back but to love. Somebody walks in, you want to stab you, you show them love. He holds them back. I was watching a video clip and I was laughing. You know why I was laughing? Because this guy was trying to uh, uh, rob this girl. This guy was trying to rob this lady. And he had a gun with him. And was asking, oh, is, you want to sell this? You want that, that, that? And the lady was, oh, yes. Just nice to him. Can I get your number? Can I do this? It, it killed the guy's ability to rob. She used kindness to kill that. And he had, he had a change of mentality because the love was ravaging. Do you have a fervency of love? Some of us, we need to meditate and just say, Lord, see, I have my communion with him in, uh, right now. We're going to take a communion today, asking the Holy Spirit to release his light upon our soul. We haven't taken communion in a long time. Lord, purge me release a upon my heart let the quietness of the lord let the peace of god the stillness of god the stillness the peace flood my soul flood my soul amen you must understand that when this fervency of love is begins to erupt within you it erupts with the life of God. It awakens everything that has died. Every gifting has died. It will awaken it. It awakens your passion. It changes the color of your skin. It makes you 
and very handsome, makes you beautiful, it makes you wonderfully made. But when the love goes down, the more you are vulnerable to attacks, you are vulnerable to offenses. This is when the devil will start using people to send all kinds of nonsense. This is what happened to David. David was a man who loved God. And the devil knew that this man, they watched David and they watched his prayer life. That this man, for him to write a book of Psalms that is going to affect generations. Let's stop this man. Before he starts worshipping, God used him to deliver Saul through worship. And the evil spirit left Saul for a while. And the devil said, ah, so this is the anointing that David has. Okay, let's bring an offense on his heart. So we not see the devil now used Saul, manipulated Saul to begin to hate on David. If you study, what did David do to Saul? Nothing. What really is the thing that you say, David, you were bad, you were wrong? Nothing. But Saul could not help it. Something was just manipulating Saul. I need to do something with David. And you see, David has a place with God, a special place with God. And we must understand and watch this in this season. This happens to me too. It happens to everyone. That the moment you position yourself to really love God with all of your heart, the moment you position yourself to really say, God, I want to seek you in this season. You have this fellow that will just come out of the flesh. They may not even know what they are doing. They just do chunk, 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 chunk. I offend you. I remember the time I was seeking God's face. I set my heart to seek God's face and I locked myself up. I gave the key to somebody to go. And I was in this building. On the second day of the fast, I just had a flashback back to a minister that did me wrong in India. I said, you know what? I'm going to call this man now and tell him the peace of my mind. And I was meditating and meditating and the Lord says, son, do you know you're fasting? I said, oh, yes. But you offended me. Okay, do you know you need to let go of this? I said, I will let go. The next day, I remembered again. Next day, I remembered again. So for four days, I would just, when I'm getting deep, this offense, this thought will just come. I said, no. And you want to tear me apart. And the Lord says, you have not let go. I said, God, you know, I, I can't let go until you help me. And I calmed down. I prayed. Thank God. Tears came down from my eyes. I started crying. I started weeping. And when the Lord began to wash this heart, I came in union with God. The greatest thing that can keep us from uniting with Christ is the offenses that come from the flesh. The flesh. We live in an imperfect world wanting to connect with the perfect God. Jesus is so gentle. Jesus is so loving. He's so loving, you cannot explain it. He's so deep, you cannot even understand or comprehend. Once he stands beside you, you could feel the pulsating love of God coming, protruding through his heart. All you can do is just rest and abide. One time I was meditating, about to travel to India. And while we were praying, and myself, a pastor, and my spiritual son, we were praying. As we were praying, I just saw the Lord Jesus held his hand up. And I could see rays of light oozing out of his hands. I couldn't see his feet. It was suspended in the air. And I said, Jesus is here. Where the pastor started weeping like a baby. 
I was weeping. My spiritual son, who seems like unemotional, not moved. This is my head, my head, my head. And it's and we were weeping, just weeping because the love of God was so strong. When Jesus enters your room, when Jesus enters your life, is way better than any master laying his hands upon you. I sense there are people here on this prayer line who you really asking Jesus to make you to be like him. He says, I am meek and lowly and gentle. Learn of me. I pray that the gentleness of Jesus, I pray that the meekness of his spirit will be released upon you now. If you hear the sound of my voice, Jesus enters into your heart, into your heart, into your heart, into your heart. Let his crown and his beauty overshadow you now. Let his peace be released on your heart. Let his peace overshadow your heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see the Lord Jesus take a small golden cup, like a communion cup, and says, Would you drink? And I said, Look at the cup. I'm just a representative of those on the prayer line and everyone on the prayer line. I said, Look at the cup. There is a prize. This is a prize that you have to pay. The Lord wants us to drink and to partake. But as he does, his peace will flood your soul. Can I release peace upon you now? I release peace over your family. I release peace over your mind. I release the peace of God over your children. I release this peace over your destiny. May you experience the peace of God. May you dwell and abide in the peace of God. In the name of Jesus. May the peace of God preserve you and hide you. This week, you will not be restless. Nothing will make you restless. Nothing will shake you. But you'll be seated in Christ in high places. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 9, look at what it says. It says, Use hospitality one to another without grudging. America, remember that word, hospitality. Somebody say hospitality. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. When I first came to came from Africa, and uh, I had my Christian brothers in Nigeria, went to their church, and while I was at their church, hmm? while I was at their church. I went to the church and this brother carries me after the service and takes me right to the restaurant. We go to nice restaurants and we eat. So we get so joyful and I always do that. Or he always does that. Never we ask me to pay because I wasn't even working. I mean, he never asked that. And one time I went to another church, the American, whatever. And, they, and somebody says, oh, okay. Let's go for this. Everybody, let's go. So we all went. And then they said, Oh, 
we all paid. I'm paying. I'm paying. I'm paying for myself. I'm paying for myself. And I'm like, what? Hallelujah. Everybody were paying for themselves. Even a particular sister who had a mother with her. Mom, I paid for you last time, so you have to pay for yourself. I'm like, what? That is not the culture of heaven. That is not the culture of heaven. I don't see anywhere in the Bible that talks about it. You pick up somebody, you want the person to pay for gas. You're just giving them a ride for two miles. You want them to give you a gas for five dollars? Something is not right with that Christianity. You get a five dollar reward. If you really want to walk in outstanding grace and charity, you be you be like what? Abraham. The Bible says Abraham saw visitors not with a priestly robe. They were going to another city. Abraham looked at them, ran to them, beckoned on them to see them, washed their feet, washed the stranger's feet. Having washed the stranger's feet, what else did he do? As he washed the stranger's feet, all of a sudden, he began to feed them. Abraham began to feed them. Abraham began to nourish them. Are you hearing me? When Abraham fed them, that's the evidence of prosperity. Never use your hospitality for your business. There are people, they, they have a house, they open a house, and they ask people to come and stay, and they charge them, which is not bad if you want to do it, make that money that way, but Abraham washed the feet of this man, washed the feet and killed a goat save this man of God. These were just mere men, no priestly robes. And what did God say? After they ate, not before they ate, after they ate, Sarah had servants. Servants were all over the house. But Sarah was told to cook that food. Sarah took the responsibility to cook that food. To make goats is not hard, it's not easy. But they made it and these guys ate and all they could say where is the wife Sarah where is the wife Sarah and a prophetic word was being released American government is very generous around the world they give out a lot but individuals within the country have been so diverted because of labor to hold on to themselves. When you have free privilege, any money or any blessings, reach out to the poor. Reach out to the poor. There are, there's a families, there are families in India who I get emails every time asking for clothes, asking for money, asking for funds. We can't neglect them. We will send. Hallelujah. This scripture talks about it. Say, use hospitality one to another without grudgingly. Verse nine. Don't be grudgeful. Don't don't. Is he gonna pay now? Is he not gonna pay now? When we talk about money, you just hang up, hang up. I don't know here. That's grudgingly. There's no reward results. No rewards for that if you really want to be a blessed multiply you must have a big heart a big heart that takes respons responsibilities a heart that says i want to feed my own village <laughs> jesus took this young boy a boy they didn't call him a man a boy who is not matured yet with the fishes and the bread gave it to jesus jesus blessed it and fed the whole people but this guy took fragments of those bread and took it back home. The word fragrant fragments meaning they were divided. They were small. Different ones. With fishes and took them home. Harvest. Hallelujah. 
Verse 10. Verse 10. Quickly. Sade baro shada badaba. Zodebe de bebia baradish. Verse 10. As every man has received gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. If any man minister, let him do as the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Ministry. Ministry. There's always a fine line that the Lord is saying that the way we begin to minister, if we're doing everything, we must do it with the consciousness that God must get the ultimate glory. One of the most perfect reward is that if you can really minister powerfully, not in your gift, but minister in the area that people feel his presence in a very strong way. You know you've done a good job by bringing Jesus to them. Try as much as possible to reveal the light of Jesus to solve situations in their life. We are created for two things. Number one, on this earth is either we are solving problems or we are creating them but a man is rewarded by the problems he creates and by the problems he solves but the far greatest reward of joy is when you solve problems when you solve problems in the life of people that is where God begins to reward you but when the problems in the life of believers they come to you with problems come with you with their depression come with you with their oppression and that is the time for me to run away it's the time where I don't pick up the call I'm, I'm not doing myself I'm not doing them I'm doing myself despite because I solved this one's problem today it doesn't mean God will reward me through them God will choose to reward me through someone else but I have to be faithful and be persistent and be diligent with the little assignment that has been committed to my hands. Some of you might not receive your reward here on the earth. You may receive your reward in heaven. For every soul. We spoke earlier about it. He that winned soul is wise. He that winneth his soul is wise. And when we use the word winneth soul, meaning somebody who has not given his life to Jesus, then God adds to his credit. Sometimes it's true. But there are people who have been saved already. Who their will, their mind, and their emotions are under the hold of the devil. Some want to commit suicide. Some want to steal. Someone will kill. Someone will commit adultery. But when you come and you're able to persuade them through prayer, you're able to change their will and redeem them from the clutches of hell, you've saved such a one from destruction. Heaven reserves a stone in eternity for you. Heaven reserves a helper for you. You know the Bible says that give shall be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto you. That word has been taken for money. But when you give love, when you extend charity to another, when you extend the truth to another. For instance, okay, you, you might okay, you see this book here by watch money. Alright. There's so much revelations here. I can choose to read this book and it can be a blessing to me. There can be other believers around here who also need the truth. But I can keep this because I need it and I guard it jealously. And I can choose not to give it to them. I 
I will get no reward. In fact, I will get reward by people holding back from me. But when I extend and I lead them to the truth, and they get blessed, other people too will lead me to something that I need that will get me blessed. That is why the Bible says, Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. We are either reaping or we are sowing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are running up here. This is verse 12. This is the last I'm going to share and then we are done. Amen. I promise you. In Jesus' name. God, God bless you. Verse 12. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery darts, fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ, suffering that when his glory shall be revealed, you shall be glad with exceeding joy. If ye, verse 14, if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory and God rest upon you. And on their path is evil spoken of, but on your path he is glorified. Can we read that scripture again? Verse 14. If you be approached for the name of Christ, happy are you. Why should be why should you be happy? He said there's a reason for this to happen. When if you begin to go through a fiery dance, when you begin to go through some some attacks that look strange to you. If it happens, it says, be happy. Why? Let's read further. For the spirit of glory and God rest upon you. So, it's a revelation that God only, the attacks only come on those who the spirit of glory rests upon. It means, if you're a carrier of the glory of God, the brighter your light, the more you are noticed by the forces of darkness. Evil powers will tend to be released against you. Strange attacks because you carry the name of God. Let me ask you a question. What would you say if you were living with David? If you were the father of David, in one moment you saw Samuel enter the house. Or is it Samuel? Yeah. Samuel enter the house, comes, and he anoints David. And you know he's the most powerful prophet in the land. Walks away. One year, two years, nothing happened for David. He's still smelling, no perfume. Still coming back with the sheep's smell on him. Still insulted, left or right, rejected. No favor in his life. 14 years. Then finally, Goliath dies. Finally, Saul, you expect Saul to promote David. All of a sudden, now the same David, Saul begins to hate David. So now the father was rejecting Saul, I mean David. The brothers too was rejecting David. Now the king, who's supposed to love David now, begins to hate David. Why is this boy suffering rejection? And David now is skillful in, in worship. Before you know it, have you heard? David, where's David now? Say, David left the city, oh, he ran away. I thought he stayed with the father. No, he's not staying with the father, he's gone. Now, Saul has declared David most wanted. He's all over searching for David. David sleeps here, sleeps there, sleeps here. He's in the midst of crazy folks. Saul is coming after you. Saul wants to kill you. Why? Why? And so all this is haunting David's head. He's replaying on his thoughts. He's sleeping, but he's restless. What is this? He forgets that the devil has seen the glory of David. The devil has seen that who can I use against David? I can't use his brothers. So the only person I can use or manipulate is a man who can bring favor and promotion on David. 
So let me influence Saul against David. And this is what began to happen. And so you are looking from far and you say, why is David not settled? Why is David not established? But he loves God. You see that with David, David begins to share all that Saul has done to him. Why Saul hates him. He says, okay, David is enough. I don't want to hear again. But David just keeps carrying on. No mother to comfort him. No father to comfort him. A man who was just haunted. Yet the Bible says he was a man after my own heart. After my own heart. Fiery darts sent to try us. Fiery darts that cannot be explained. Because the Lord of glory is upon you. Listen, when the Lord of glory is upon you, people will hate you for one reason or the other. You don't understand it. Why do they, Why can't they just flow with me? What is going on? Glory separates you from everyone. Before the glory falls, you must go through the tunnel of rejection. Have you been rejected before? Has it been so painful? glory carriers it's not easy people carry the the menorah the candlesticks which is the glory the glory is a combination of intense light of god it's not just light it's the intensified light when god is setting you up to be a glory carrier your heart will be tested. 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 You will dwell in the midst of wrong people. Not with angels. With wrong people. Remember that. Not with angels. Wrong people. They just hate you for no reason. Even preachers that you think that they will walk in love begins to show, begins to act in a certain way that can pinch your heart. I tell you, those, I mean, everybody who is a true intercessor and loves God, we go through this. It can be so painful if you're in that season. Because usually there's nobody to talk to. Nobody. I'm feeling the pain of somebody now. There's nobody to talk to. You talk to your pastor, he's, he, he doesn't understand your pain. Some people you talk to, you think they will understand. They won't understand. Sometimes, I've been through such situations. I, really, I just wish to say, man, I wish my mom was alive so I could talk to my mom. It can be so, so painful. But God is a comforter. Many times, you try to call this one, call this one, but once you just say, Lord Jesus, why? Why must I go through this? Jesus pulls his chair close to you and says, son, let me tell you something. It's a proof that you love me because you carried the cross I once carved. My grace is sufficient for you. thing starts that lonely process this is when the host of heaven is looking at you this is when you feel alone in Gethsemane in the darkest places of the earth you feel like everybody has forsaken you
Hallelujah. Praise God. It's going to be warm. You know, when I'm not saying this because I'm going through something now. No, 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 no. I think of the past. I think of the past. Listen to me. The more we wait for Jesus, the more men are turned from wicked men to snakes to monsters to beasts to antichrist. They will begin to metamorphosize. Their heart will metamorphosize. Their heart will go harder and harder and harder and harder. You will try to comprehend them. You will not even understand. Hallelujah. You will try to understand. Say, ah, what is going on? What is really going on with these people? Why are they acting this way? You won't even understand what is going on. But just keep your heart. Keep your heart. Keep your heart. If your heart is right, you are fine. Hallelujah. Verse 13. But rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ, in Christ's suffering. You are partaker of his suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may also be in a sitting joy, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his suffering. When you partake of his suffering, it's an evident you will partake in his resurrection. When you identify through his suffering, it means that God is about to crown you with a resurrected power. The power that resurrects every death in your family. When this resurrection power comes upon you, why will God have to take you through the tunnel before he takes you through the mountains? So that you don't forget where you're coming from. Because the resurrection power is so powerful. It's, it can get into your head. Because that is the resurrection power can bring prosperity. Resurrection power will bring restoration on everything that you've lost. God begins to restore. Resurrection power, people begin to see you as the God. People begin to see a unique, special grace upon you. A supernatural, a supernatural anointing begins to flow in your life and in your soul and your ministry. Hallelujah. When this supernatural anointing is upon your life, God is about to bring you in this season. This month of November, God has promised some surprise packages for many of us. Many things is about to happen. The bank of heaven is about to open for you. Thank you, my Father. Amen. 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 Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Verse 15. Let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief, or as an evildoer, or as busybody in men's matters. Let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief. Yet, if any, any man suffer as Christ, then they use the word Christian. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as Christian or a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin in the house of God. If it first begin, hallelujah. Oh, Rebekah, get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. We are you are so lifted you are so blessed in jesus name let me tell you something right now hallelujah let me tell you something right now um in new york we're gonna be meeting in new york and the lord has commanded us on saturday morning to wash the feet of believers dip your feet in oil dip your feet in oil I know the powerful and the benefits of foot washing. You can wash in water or you can wash in oil. And oil symbolizes prosperity and increase. That God will begin to direct your steps and every step you take will be led supernatural by Him. 
that you will not be deviated, you will not be distracted. That 2018 will be a month and a year of speed and acceleration. Hallelujah. And there are many staircases God has preserved for us. Many staircases. Many staircases. So many mantles will be released in this season. God will restore passion in your life. God will restore fire in your destiny. Whatsoever has killed that fire, God will restore it now. In Jesus' name. There's going to be a serious encounters. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. And soon after that, we'll come for to another conference in Atlanta. Amen. After New York, it will be Atlanta. But that will be 2018. Atlanta, then Florida. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Are you blessed today? Are you blessed today? Hiya, gada, 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 gada. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I am blessed. What a privilege to be a God servant, to bring the word of God into your life and to be a blessing to you. Amen. I really, really thank God. I really celebrate everyone today. Hallelujah. The heavens must be opened and it must be opened in your life. I decree that you must testify. I decree in the name of Jesus. Oh God, give us an encounter. Give us an encounter. Let's take this now. Give us an encounter. An encounter with you, oh God. Oh, Rebebe, Rebebe, Aparaka, Shadabas. So, Rebebe, 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 Aparadi, Rebebe, Os. An encounter with you, an encounter with you, an encounter with you. Oh, Rebebe, Rebebe, Kabarandu, Rebebe, Obos, Abahayas. Ali, Brandu, Rebebe, Rebebe, Goshede, Rebebe, Kabaradi, Os. Oh, lift your communion up before the Lord in the name of Jesus. Let's begin to talk to the Lord right now. Holy Spirit, I want a divine encounter. Lord, as I take this communion, Father, let the very life of your spirit be released upon my heart in the name of Jesus. Let the life of your spirit be released upon me. Oh God, I want to have an encounter with you. Holy Spirit, remove the veil. Remove the veil. Remove the veil. Remove the veil. Oh, Rebebe, Rebebe, Bia Parado, Rebebeos. Sade Barado, Sondore, Rebebe, Bia Paradish. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. So, Rebebe, Bia Paradish. One man was ready to it. Because I was commanded to do so today. Hallelujah. 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 If you have not given your life to Christ on Periscope, on a prayer line, and you want to give your life to Christ, say this with me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I surrender my heart unto you. I have walked away from you. Show me mercy. I want to come back home. Father, show me mercy. Receive me, O oh God, as your son. Come into my heart, Father. Come into my life. Transform me, O oh God. Heal me, O oh God, and make me whole. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you just receive Jesus into your heart. Amen. Right there, say, I just received Jesus. If you are one of them, just say, Lord, I received Jesus into my heart. Or send me a text, I just received Jesus into my heart. In Jesus' name. Father, Lord, by your spirit, let these winds, let their lives be transformed. Let their hearts be renewed. Change them to be like you. Change them to be like you. Draw them closer. 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 Jesus name. Now I'm going to pray for everyone now. Say, Lord, draw me closer. I pray for the sinners. Now it's you, it's your turn. Lord, everyone that is listening to me, everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice, 
let me change the sound and I, I need more of course presence now i need his presence now lord draw us closer now draw us closer now everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice please take a communion out father draw everyone now before your banquet bring us closer to you you are gentle you are full of love in spite of our shortcomings you still love us breathe upon Breathe upon us that we may dwell in the sacred place of the Most High. Let us abide in that sacred place. Let us abide in you. Hide us from the enemy. Oh God, put your word inside of us. Everyone on the prayer line, on Periscope, I ask that you draw us closer, unite our spirit, make us one in you, bathe us with your love, bathe us with your glory, renew our mind in your spirit, let us hear the voice of your love. Take us to the mountain that is higher than I. Fill us with a new hunger, a new desire for the things of God. Change our hearts. To melt our hearts. Let our hearts reflect your love. Whisper your mysteries. Plant in us your mysteries. Fill our hearts to receive more of you. Mend our broken hearts. Oh God. Elebrus of Randeus. As we commune with you through this communion, let your light fill our hearts. Let your light flood our soul. Let this temple become the temple of the Holy Ghost. Let your peace, your mind matter, your peace that passes all understanding, flow in our hearts. Quicken our mind. Quicken our minds. Break the spirit of fear. Crown us with thy glory. same night he lifted up the bread and broke it he says take eat as often as you eat do it to remembrance of me as we eat your bread revive us anoint us set us free in Jesus name you can eat your bread up the blood so as often as you drink my blood do it in remembrance of me Father as we lift up this blood before you the blood of Jesus speak better things than the blood of Abel let your blood enter into our blood transform our lives Oh God, transform our soul, our health, and everything coming to alignment. Come
compliance to your word. In Jesus' name. I, I, as everyone partakes of this, fill us with the joy of your spirit. The joy of your spirit. The joy of your spirit. A seeding gladness of God. A seeding joy. Let it overtake our soul and our spirit. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. In the name of the Holy Ghost. You can drink of the blood. Amen. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let the hand of the Lord come upon everyone now. Let it be a duplication of the hand of God upon your lives right now. Everyone, receive the touch. 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 Yes, Lord, roll away the blackheads. Roll away the darkness. Let there be a release of your peace. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Everybody on Paris, how are you? Amen. How are you feeling? How are you feeling? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Was everybody hearing me clear? What? It wasn't clear before, so you missed the word of God? No, no, no. When you were doing the um, communion, it was not clear. Yeah, oh, in Jesus' name. Well, the Lord has revealed his love upon you in Jesus' name. From today, I speak clarity upon your mind. I speak clarity upon your mind. I speak clarity upon your thoughts. You, that therapist, I speak to you now. I say, speak to you now. You that therapist, let your mind be cleared in the name of Jesus. I speak clarity upon your mind in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. What? Hallelujah. Amen. You are touched in Jesus' name. It's going to be well, Hazel. God bless you. Huh? God bless you. God bless you. Well, let's share the grace. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to bless God. Amen. Let me, let me pray for you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise. I lift up everyone on this prayer line. I lift them before you, Father. Let them experience your covering. Hide everyone under your mercy. Hide everyone under grace. Sustain everyone, oh God, by your love. We mess up every now and then. Keep us, oh God, by your helping hand. Oh God, preserve us from wrong decisions. Preserve us, oh God, from the eye of the enemy. Father, we, let us abide in that secret place. Oh God. Beth a new hunger, hunger, hunger within our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Love you guys now. I want to be blessed now, okay? Bye-bye now. Yes, sir. 
God bless you, my sister. How are you? My California sister, how are you? Hmm? It's going to be well, okay? You hear me? How are you, though? How are things with you? You're doing great. Okay, we're calling all the way from... Uh, Can I call you later this week? Yeah, please. Please. You can call me now.